Hello everyone, I'm Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Animal Sanctuary. This week for Training Tuesday, I'm going to talk to you about how important it is for you to train your snakes to understand some specific signals that will make not only their life easier and let them experience much less fear, anxiety, and distress, but it will make your life in caring for them easier. So as a snake keeper, do yourself and do your snake a favor. Work out some basic communication with your snake. At the very least, teach your snake a signal that means it is mealtime. Teach your snake a signal that means you are going to pick them up and that you're going to be intruding into their enclosure and or that you're going to be touching them. Be able to recognize what your snake's body language is communicating to you. And please remember that snakes, humans, and all animals dislike surprises. We don't like ambiguity and neither do our snakes. When things are unclear or when animals or people don't know what's about to happen to them, it can cause stress, anxiety, nervousness, and it can trigger an automatic defensive behavior. Teach your snakes a definitive, clear signal that is dinner time, that they are about to get fed. This is like you telling a family member, hey, dinner's ready. In very clear verbal language, I was just told by my husband or by a roommate that dinner's ready and I have an opportunity to come and eat. There will be food available. Your dogs understand this when they see you start to put food in their bowl or their stuffed chew toys or their slow puzzle feeders. Your cats know it's dinner time, usually because they hear the cat food can being peeled open. Maybe your kids are outside. Maybe you have livestock and you ring a literal dinner bell so that the kids, the animals, everybody knows it's dinner time. You wanna teach your snake something that means it is dinner time. That might be a card that you show them visually at their door. It could be some kind of a target. It might be a stick. It might be shining a flashlight right before you feed them. It doesn't matter what the cue or signal is as long as you use the same one every time you feed them and you do not use that cue or signal at any other time. When you have a clear way to communicate to the snake that you're going to feed them and you are consistent with that cue or signal, the snake will always know what's about to happen and that's gonna reduce any feeding confusion. If you look at this video that I'm showing right now, I am giving Moondor, my West Papuan carpet python, the dinner bell. That's his signal that it's dinner time. He came out of his sky hide and he was ready to eat. Notice that I was standing there for a while and he didn't come out of his sky hide because I was standing there or because I opened the door. He waited until I gave him the signal that said, hey, dinner's ready. Choose a signal to tell your snake, I am going to intrude into your habitat and I'm going to touch you, pick you up. And in this circumstance, when given the signal, you cannot opt out. So usually my snakes have the option to interact with me or not. I don't force handling on them. However, there are specific circumstances when it is necessary. And I reserve this cue, this I am going to touch you and pick you up and intrude into your space cue for those rare occasions when it is a necessity. It might be veterinary appointments, exigent circumstances, or emergencies. It might be to retrieve the snake from someplace that could be dangerous for them to be in, or to put them away for their final time when they have been out for exercise or exploration. And I can't wait for them to go in on their own. I can't wait for them to go into their shift. They're not on an object that I can easily lift up and put them back into their enclosure on, and I'm not going to target them back in. I use a snake hook for this and only this. I only use a snake hook to signal to the snake, I am going to touch you and pick you up and you don't have an option to choose not to have this happen at this point in time. Do not overuse this signal. If you overuse this, if you start using your I'm going to pick you up signal, just every time you feel like it, and believe me, showing your snake off to your friend, 
holding the snake because you just feel like it, cleaning their enclosure, changing their water. These are not exigent circumstances, necessities, or emergencies. You can wait for more opportune times when your snake is in a more amenable mood or when they are in a better position for you to do those activities and it is their choice or they're not in the enclosure at all and you can do your enclosure maintenance. I'm talking about using this signal when it's an absolute necessity because if you overuse it, then every time they see the snake hook or they see the stick or they see the target that you're using to tell them I'm going to pick you up, then they're gonna increase their escape and avoidance behavior if you're overusing it. So this should just not be used very often at all. With some of my snakes, I might only use this once a year when they do have to go to the vet. But with other snakes, like the one you're gonna see in this video, I only use it with her when I need to put her away for some reason, and I don't put her away forcibly very often. I usually wait for her to shift back, I target her back, or I wait for her to go in or on a shift that I can carry back or I just leave her out for longer. But on those occasions when I have to put her back and she doesn't have a choice and she's not gonna get put back and then be able to come right back out, I use a snake hook. And that's what you're seeing in this video. I just touch her with it. I might pick her up with it, but when this happens, she knows Lori is about to pick me up and I'm going back to my enclosure and I don't get to stay out any longer and I don't have any choice in this matter. And that's the only time I use the snake hook. I don't use it for any other reason. Many times once I have picked the snake up, I'll put the snake hook down and other times I'll just use the snake hook to carry them the rest of the way to their enclosure or their carrier or whatever it is I need to do with them. Be able to recognize what your snake is telling you and listen to what they're telling you. Don't just be able to recognize, oh, my snake is scared, my snake is nervous, my snake is defensive. If they are exhibiting distance creating behaviors, indicating to you, leave me alone, or I need you to get away from me, please listen to that, respect them, and create distance, give them the space that they need. Now, species and individuals may vary, so you need to learn what your snake's communication signals are and what they mean for your individual snake. Here is a cheat sheet of some of the common body language behaviors that you might see when your snake is comfortable and relaxed, when they're experiencing moderate but tolerable stress, and when they are distressed and over threshold. This is not a total list. There are over 3,000 species of snakes, and they are going to have some variation. And individual snakes within the same species might have some variation. These are just common ones, and these are gonna be common with species that are most likely to be kept as pets like pythons and boas and corn snakes and rat snakes and some other colubrids. Avoid surprise to reduce startle and automatic defensive responses being kicked in. Surprisingness is not necessarily a good thing. I know some people like surprises, but not usually when that surprise is followed by something bad. So surprise is evoked by unexpected or schema discrepant events. And its intensity is determined by the degree of schema discrepancy. So that means under certain conditions, in certain contexts, organisms have an expectation of what's likely to happen. When the event that happens is in conflict with what they expected, it causes surprise and it elicits a really high emotional response. And when that surprising event is something negative, something bad, something aversive, it can cause detrimental impacts down the road. Unexpected events cause an automatic interruption of ongoing mental processes. Those are followed by an attentional shift and attentional binding to the events, which is often followed by causal and other event analysis processes and schema revision. So while normally maybe your snake isn't afraid of you walking up to the enclosure and opening the door, if you walk up to the enclosure and open the door while they're sleeping and you grab them suddenly and it startled them and took them completely by surprise and they feel negatively about that, that was an unpleasant experience for them, that is going to impact how they feel about you approaching their enclosure and sticking your hands inside and opening the door in the future. There are several papers about this. I have one cited here that these quotes came from. So I encourage you to read those on your own. Just avoid surprising this because in general, nobody likes surprises. Communicate your intent to your snake. 
You do this and you're going to eliminate the startle response. You're going to eliminate any surprisingness about a situation if your snake knows exactly what you're about to do. It reduces miscommunication and it's going to help you develop a relationship with your snake that's built on trust, not your snake always wondering, oh my God, what's about to happen to me? What is she going to do? I'm so worried. Make sure that you clearly communicate your intent so that your snake knows what's about to happen. You can do that through your body language, through the environmental context, through use of a target being paired with different events. These are two targets I pair with opening my snake's door, and I put the target at the door that's going to be opened. This is what I use when I'm going to pick my snake up and they don't have a choice about it. This is what I use to signal that I'm going to feed my snake. But you can choose anything. It could be a flashlight. It could be an index card with a color or pattern on it. It could be a branch, a stick. It doesn't matter what the signal or cue is as long as your snake can perceive it. And you always pair that one cue with that one thing that you want it to mean. So don't change up the signals or cues. And if for some reason you have to do that, then you need to teach them the new signals and cues. And there's a whole process for how to do that. Once a snake has learned that this means that, you violate their trust by not sticking to that procedure. So if I have always taught my snake that this means the door is gonna open and they can come out on their own, but I'm not gonna reach in and get them out. And then one day I show them this and I open the door and I reach in and I grab them out and I stuff them in a carrier and I take them to the vet where they get shots they i just violated their trust because that is not what this cue meant to them before so please be consistent with your cues and don't change them up violation of trust can result in generalized fear and anxiety because now the snake doesn't know what to expect or what your behaviors mean because you have just confused them by changing up your signals or by just deciding i'm not going to give you any signals anymore at all so there you go just guess what i'm about to do next so in summary, uncertainty causes nervousness and defensiveness. Let your snake know what is about to happen by teaching them that this means that. And it's super easy to do. You just pick a signal, a cue, you pair that with an event, and you always pair that signal with that event, and your snake will learn that that signal means I'm getting picked up. That signal means I'm going to eat. That signal means she's going to open the door, but she's not going to intrude into my space and I can come out if I want. Teach your snake a signal that means you're going to pick them up or be intruding into their enclosure. Teach your snake a signal that means it is mealtime. Make sure your snake recognizes your body language and signals and avoid changing them up. And make sure that you are able to recognize what your snake's body language is communicating to you. So in other words, develop simple communication signals with your snake so that you reduce any surprise and uncertainty between the two of you. Let your snake know what's about to happen and life will be easier. Thank you so much for spending time to learn with me today and to be interested in creating a better relationship with your animal, whether that's a snake or another kind of animal. If you have any questions, you can reach me at behavioreducationllc at gmail.com. You can message me on Facebook or Instagram. I am also on LinkedIn, Twitter. Obviously, I'm on YouTube. And you can always reach me through my website at behavioreducation.org. Until next time, keep your communication with your snake very clear. Always be kind and love your animals.